Coming up, Fargo police are investigating a stabbing that took place yesterday afternoon. And a Fargo woman looks to win a magazine cover contest to give back to those who helped her find her mom who went missing 30 years ago. Plus, a black owned hair salon looks to continue providing more hair care opportunities for people of color. Valley News Live at 10 starts now. This is Valley News Live at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I am Nashe Taylor. Fargo police are investigating a stabbing that happened yesterday afternoon. Fargo police were called to a residence in the 1400 block of Gateway Circle South shortly after 1.30. When officers arrived, they found a person that had apparently been stabbed with an object and was in need of medical care. The individual was taken to a local hospital to be treated. Their condition is still unknown at this time. It is also unclear if police are looking for a suspect. A Fargo woman is in the running to be on the cover of Inked Magazine and the winning prize is $25,000. With the money, she hopes to give back to the groups that helped her find her mom who went missing 30 years ago. Valley News team's Alex Larson sat down with the woman to learn more. I just want to give some hope to people that it can, you can bring them back. Crystal Anderson's mother, Mary Lynn Anderson, went missing over 30 years ago in Wyoming. I never did get to meet my mom. I have pictures of her um, together when I was little, but we never knew what happened to her. She never gave up trying to find the woman. She never got a chance to know. She entered her mom's information on sites that profile missing persons to get her name out there. We had a few situations where we'd seen some missing Jane Doe's and it sounded like, well, that could be my mom because yeah. that sounds like the area she was in the last time she was seen. When she called the sheriff's office where her mom had last been seen. But her information was completely wiped out. And then in 2016. The BCA showed up at our door and said that my mom had been um, buried as a Jane Doe in Gillette, Wyoming. Um, since 1983. Her family brought her mom's remains back home and laid her to rest. But the case investigating her death remains open. And so far, there are still no leads on what happened to her. She was buried in a gravel pit <clears throat> out there. And it was actually road workers that had found her remains, her skull and everything. So. Anderson entered a contest to hopefully bring awareness to those who are missing. If she wins the Inked Magazine competition, Anderson says she wants to give some of this prize money back to those who helped find her mom. I see so many of these organizations that are having problems running them because they don't have enough volunteers. They don't have enough money to keep the pages going for everything that they need. Because a lot of these people, this is what they do every day. She's even started a nonprofit of her own to help find missing persons. It's something that my mom would want me to do. You know, I just, I want families to have that help. Um, there wasn't much, you know, these kind of things back when my mom went missing. You never give up on them. If we would have given up, you know, it's been over 30 years, but it can happen. In Fargo, Alex Larson, Valley News Live. The competition ends in March and voting for Crystal is free. If you would like to vote for Crystal, we'll have a link attached to this story on our website. Meanwhile, around 7 p.m. this evening, a crash blocked part of the intersection at 45th Street and 17th Avenue South. This is a short distance from Shields. In the video, you can see two vehicles stopped in that intersection appeared to have hit head on. The crash also slowed traffic as crews cleaned up the area. Currently, there's no word if anyone was injured. And in other news, a special city commission meeting is being held on Thursday to look into possible liquor license violations made by the South Town Poor House. The restaurant currently holds a type of license that requires food and alcohol sales to gross equally. The location is also home to separately owned Dwayne's House of Pizza, which is sparking debate over possible violations. The meeting takes place at noon on Thursday at City Hall. And jury selection begins Monday in the federal hate crimes trial for the three men who killed Ahmad Arbery. Government lawyers will try to prove the men chased down and shot the 25 year old to death because he was black. Gregory and Travis McMichael withdrew their guilty pleas last week after the judge overseeing the case rejected the plea deals the men reached with the prosecutors 
over, over the Arbery family's objections. Today, Governor Tim Walz spoke out following the fatal shooting of a 22 year old black man after Minneapolis police officers executed a no knock warrant. Walls explains his stance on the need for policy changes regarding these types of warrants. I'm sorry it took this tragedy, but there are voices now saying across the political spectrum that that these are dangerous. They're dangerous for as you saw in this case, a young man, um, they're dangerous for police. And, and we need to figure out what the best practice is to make sure, one, we're getting violent criminals or folks that we're looking for off the streets, but this young man had nothing to do with the warrant. Locke was fatally shot Wednesday morning in a downtown apartment after a SWAT team burst through the door while executing that no-knock warrant. And an emergency car caravan calling for justice for Amir Locke was held tonight in Minneapolis. Demonstrators are demanding the resignations of Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry, Interim Police Chief Amelia Huffman, and the judge who signed the warrant. They are also calling for the officers who executed the warrant to be fired and prosecuted. It's the second weekend of protests held by the so-called Freedom Convoy, and police in Canada are now issuing hundreds of tickets to demonstrators taking part in a blockade to protest against COVID-19 restrictions. Protesters who say they're fighting for freedom have been gathering in Ottawa near the U.S. border for over a week as part of a nationwide trucker protests. They are demanding health restrictions be loosened, like mask and vac vaccine mandates. Since yesterday, police have given out more than 450 citations. Officers say demonstrators have been extremely disruptive and are creating a public safety risk. Several vehicles have also been seized and towed. Attorney generals from 13 states are backing the Mexican government's lawsuit against a group of U.S. gun makers. The lawsuit accuses gun manufacturers, including Smith & Wesson, Colton Glock of being responsible for crimes committed with their weapons in Mexico. The suit alleges gun makers of marketing and distributing guns in ways that arm Mexican drug cartels. The Democratic Attorney Generals of California, Minnesota, New York and a number of other states have recently filed briefs in support of the lawsuit. Ukraine's presidential advisor describes the current situation with tens of thousands of Russian troops along the border of the country as, quote, completely under control. But in the meantime, the U.S. and its allies are keeping a close watch. John Lawrence reports. Satellite images taken Saturday appear to show an advance of Russian military deployments at numerous locations in Belarus, which shares a border with Ukraine and where joint exercises are due to begin this week. These are dangerous times, times of the essence. This would be the largest invasion in Europe uh, since World War II. The Kremlin has repeatedly denied it's planning a Ukrainian incursion, but the U.S. and its allies are keeping close watch. We believe that the Russians have put in place the capabilities to mount a significant military operation into Ukraine, and we have been working hard to prepare a response. U.S. troops are heading to Europe to help defend European allies amid the standoff on Ukraine's borders. The Pentagon says 3,000 U.S. troops are going to Poland, Germany, and Romania. There is no U.S. combat role in Ukraine. There isn't going to be one. I don't know of anyone who supports it, not even the Ukrainians. That said, I think that Vladimir Putin has to pay a high price if he does this. That's a stance that has bipartisan support in Washington. We hope to be able to show Mr. Putin that Democrats and Republicans in the Senate and the House and that the White House are united, that if he does do further incursions into Ukraine, he'll pay a very, very, very heavy price from the economic and point of view and the isolation politically. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Today, President Joe Biden declined to say whether he would consider deploying additional U.S. troops to NATO allies in the region if President Putin refused to de-escalate tensions with Ukraine. And a new shipment of U.S. military equipment is now in Ukraine. In a tweet today, the U.S. Embassy in Kyiv says the shipment carried about 80 tons of military aid for the Ukrainian armed forces. This was the eighth U.S. delivery of supplies and equipment with more expected to come. 
Later on Valley News Live at 10, some community members brave the cold for a good cause. But first, temperatures are expected to warm up, but a snow rain and ice mix could also be headed our way this week.